100 days ago, I turned a barren wasteland into a swamp, teeming with life of all shapes and sizes. But be careful, for something sinister lurks beneath. But it wasn't always this way. On day one, the swamp was a dry, desolate, and lifeless place. But all that would change as it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. On day 40, the rains cleared and the sun shined through. The waters gurgled as life began to emerge. First mosses, then small plants, and finally mushrooms. And by day 50, the entire swamp was covered in greenery. However, the plants weren't the only thing that began to stir. On day 60, creatures flocked to the ecosystem as food and water were readily available. These are springtails. They'll eat mold and other decaying matter. They're also hydrophobic, meaning they can walk on water, making them a perfect swamp creature. The zebra snail got tired of cleaning the skull and decided to go straight through the eye socket for a cannonball. Meanwhile, up above, a smaller snail was attempting to climb to the top of the waterfall. But he's not the only one. The competition is fierce, as only the strongest will make it to the top. The two competitors battle for the throne. Is... is he even moving? This, uh, maybe isn't as fun as I thought it would be. Um, I'm not a loser, so I didn't spend Friday night watching Snail's race. But I came back Saturday morning to see who had won. There was no way to know who won, until the winner decided to climb into the waterfall and spray everyone who was so clearly beneath him. However, it's not all fun and games, as the swamp faces a serious threat. The fly population has overtaken the swamp, and without a natural predator, they will consume every square inch. They have come. The walls of the ecosystem are covered in duckweed. Something has crawled up from the waters and made its way onto land. Meet the reticulated glass frog. A creature known for its completely translucent skin. Glass frogs can direct 90% of their blood away from their limbs making their skin completely translucent, allowing them to camouflage into nearly any leaf. This is salt, pepper, and tiny, and they're hungry. These three ferocious beasts will stalk the swamps and ruthlessly eliminate any and all flies. They waste no time in getting to work. Armed with camouflage and deadly precision, the fly population stood no chance. Patiently waiting, they would only strike when the kill was certain. And what was once a threatening swarm had been reduced to nothing but fertilizer 